Well, we're back at Beauchene Wilderness Lodge, and Dave's got a bit of a flick in his shake. He's got a top secret ninja assassin move, and today, he's sharing it with the world. You know I don't like to quote Dave, but I must say, the cheetahs were well fed on this one. <laughs> in a land like no other, on a lake like you've never seen, well, maybe you've seen lakes like this. But there is an angler so great, he once set the hook so hard he turned a small mouth into a large mouth. He can unscramble an egg. He made his first cast at the age of three and it landed yesterday. We join him to chronicle one day on one lake. This is Facts of Fishing, the show. Here we go! Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Yamaha, conquer water. Phoenix Bass Boats, experience the Phoenix difference. Live Target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. And, Jackal. Eat. Sleep. Jackal. <laughs> How awesome is this? Look at that right there. Camera guy in the water. Let's reveal the secret right now. Underwater assassin Ryan Ponnen in the water and hook this fish. That is absolutely awesome. Oh, this is a fun, fun way to fish the way we're fishing today. And this is one of those ones you're sometimes a little bit reluctant to talk about. One of those little sneaky. Sneaky, dirty, dirty secrets that I've been doing for a long, long time and we have never shown on Facts Fishing. But today is a special day and it is starting off right. What an awesome way to start the day. Little dirty secrets are gonna be revealed today on Facts of Fishing. And if that isn't a cheesy TV open, I don't know what is. This segment is brought to you by ARE Truck Caps. ARE, outfit for life. Man, I'll tell you what. Nico Riggin is um, one of the coolest things out there and you know a technique is really really cool when companies start making baits specifically for that technique and flick shake worm is one of the most popular worms out there i mean it's caught millions of bass but they have made a nico flick and what they've done is they've just made the the tail of the worm or the head of the worm base of the worm a lot thicker so it can hold that weight but it's still got that crazy tail action of a flick shake and plain and simple, this is a fish catcher and it catches fish quite often that you probably just don't think will bite, you know, those skittish fish. This is just something a little bit slower, a little bit different, and it's got a ton of advantages. Easy, dude. Man, the pickup on this bait is ever, ever so subtle. This is the kind of technique I mean, I'm throwing a fluorocarbon leader, but I definitely want to throw a braided line just, just for that extra feel. I mean, you give any bit of slack 
to that bait. And if you're throwing fluorocarbon or monofilament, you're not gonna feel that fish at all. But with the braided line, just that subtle little thunk. And every time I catch one of them like that, it just makes me think, I mean, imagine if I was throwing not braid. You know, imagine if I was throwing just regular line, just that little subtle little pink on braid. What you feel on fluorocarbon or on monofilament is this. Nothing. But with braid, even if you've got, that's a chunk right there. Even if you have got the tiniest, most subtle little pickup, you were gonna feel it on the braided line, and it definitely gives you an advantage for these bad boys. See ya, dude. Sauntering away. Look at that fish right there. Man, I can't stress how important it is to throw braided line with this technique. You know, it, what it does is it, it makes up for your failures. I mean, it's really easy to go out there and say, hey, I'm gonna feel every single bite. And you are, if you're gonna keep your line tight all the time, but when you're throwing this bait, it also is an advantage to put a little slack in that line when you're shaking that bait. And that slack becomes a disadvantage when you're throwing other lines because you're not gonna feel that hit. The braided line just makes you a better angler. It, it fixes your mistakes. I mean, if you think you're gonna keep your line tight perfectly all the time, you don't need it, but if you're me, you want to put every single favor you can in your court, and that's exactly what Fishing Braided Line is going to do with this technique. Easy, dude. Bulldogger. Pretty decent one right there. I mean, we're catching a lot of numbers on this bait, and that's one of the cool things about it. I mean, you know, soft plastic stick baits, baits like that, like a Sanko style bait. Uh, kind of the same deal. This is one of those baits where you are gonna catch some numbers. So you get to a new lake, it's your first time ever fishing it, it's a pretty smart bait. But it's not the kind of bait that you're gonna go out and find the fish. When you get in an area with those fish, you wanna slow down and throw that little Nico flick. And as you can see, they like munching it. If you truly want this bait to be as effective as possible, one of the keys and one of the things you gotta get really good at is making the bait move without making the bait move. And one of the best ways to do that, I mean, if I have a fish follow or anything like that, a lot of times I'll just leave that bait there and start hitting my rod. It sounds crazy, but that way you're not moving the weight off the bottom of the, of the structure, but you're making that bait shake and it drives fish crazy. Oh, mm, he smoked it. <laughs> ah! <sighs> Yum. This transition we're fishing right here is a key area when it comes to fishing a bait like this. You look right over here, you know, we're right beside the shoreline. You literally go from a foot of water right there 
to 12 feet of water right here. And the good thing about an area like this, no matter what bait you're fishing is, it's really easy to isolate those fish. I mean, after this, it drops way off. You know those bass aren't living out there. They're living somewhere between here and here. The smaller the area that you can isolate the fish, the easier it is to locate that pinpoint key zone that a bunch of them are gonna be holding in. Better one too. Come here, dude. Smoked it. Well, oh, easy. Stay out of the wood. Stay out of the wood. Look at that, dude. Right there. Big old yapper on him. Pretty skinny fish. What a good one. Just saunters away. See ya. He dropped it again. Big one. Big one. <laughs> that right there. Oh, man. Gone right at the side of the boat. Sometimes it's going to make you wonder if that fish right there is gone because you lost it or it was just holding on to the weight. A lot of times that happens. There go, another one. Ooh, another giant. Another big one. But this area I'm fishing here is a prime example of what I was talking about a little while ago. You get smaller transitions and it becomes a lot easier to locate those fish. I mean, a big wide transition. I mean, you gotta spend a day figuring that out, but a small little transition like this, you know, it's just an island and all around it, I mean, it drops off very, very deep. So you know, the exact location that these bad boys are calling home a lot quicker. See ya. Never changes, the goal is always the same. Figure them out and once you figure them out, Stay on top of them. It's just really paying attention to those little things, those little details. You know, the exact area you catch that fish. No bite you get is a fluke. I can guarantee you that much. Don't think a bite is luck. When you get a bite, figure out exactly what depth it was, how you were working that bait, and duplicate it. The more you duplicate it, the more the results will do exactly that and duplicate. The Replay of the Day is brought to you by Action Car and Truck Accessories. Whether it's your work truck, fishing truck, or just your daily ride, Action has got you covered. Action, 36 stores across Canada. See them at actioncarandtruck.com. Oh, go. Big one. Big one. To book your trip of a lifetime at Beauchene Wilderness Lodge, visit beauchene.com. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing.
You know, when it comes to choosing a rod for this particular technique, the rod I'm fishing with today is seven foot three. And honestly, that is the minimum I'm gonna fish with when it comes to this technique. You really do not set the hook at all. You just pull into these fish. So one of the most important parts of that is leverage. And the best way to get more leverage is use a longer rod. So I would not recommend fishing this technique with a rod less than seven foot. I mean, I wouldn't go less than seven, three, seven, six, preferably. The longer the rod, the more opportunity you're gonna have to lay leverage in those fish and sink that hook home without actually setting the hook, just cinching down. I say finesse 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 I keep talking about the right way to set the hook and it's really easy to get excited I just totally destroyed that fish right there but it was just by being overzealous with this technique you just want to load up on that rod you do not want to set the hook actually let's rewind the footage and look back at what not to do when fishing this bait deal with this Nico flick is it's basically you know just like a flick shake but it's got a beefed up head and that's where the magic happens that cavity allows you to store you know these little tungsten weights that add that weight to it but a couple of things when you're Nico rigging that you want to keep in mind first of all it's kind of like a wacky rig except it's not in this direction it's up and down and you just kind of pinch through that worm right there around the uh, egg sac of the worm and then I'll take the bottom of this bad boy and that's the one thing to really pay attention to a lot of people will think you hook that the other way your bait's not going to work right if you hook it that way so always hook it down like that take this little tungsten weight slide that bad boy in there all the weight is in there and, and I've tried a bunch of different Nico rig weights you know some of the bell ones I just find you lose a lot more that slender little tungsten one you can shove it up just a bit further and you go through a lot less weight but that is the rig right there and that cheeky monkey just basically dances across the bottom and they munch it one of the other really cool features about this style of fishing is it excels in a lot of different depths i mean there's a lot of techniques that are specifically shallow water techniques or techniques that are specifically deep water techniques. I mean, today I'm basically fishing this bait from half a foot of water to 12 feet of water and it excels in all those different levels. I mean, it's a great, great bait and the nice thing about it, even when it's fallen in that 12 feet of water, it's working the whole way down. That little flick shake tail drives fish crazy. Probably one of the least talked about, you know, parts of fishing and it's feel. Feel is the, it's the, you know, it's, it's the most important thing that it's the thing that is so important, but nobody's talking about it. You know, it's that crazy deal and it blows me away, but you realize baits that become very, very successful, no matter what style it is, it's the feel. You get a bait with that right feel under the water and a flick shake has proved to be the right feel. You know, it, it started a phenomenon just like the Nico. So you take those two phenomena, put them together and you've got much, much time. Oh, <laughs> freak 
Panda does a dance. Come here. Oh man, look at that fish right there. Oh, sweet, sweet, sexy chunk. Every one of these dudes smoked that Nico flick. An awesome, awesome bait Whew, with a pretty awesome result. Mwah. Doesn't get much better than that. Dave fished for nine hours, made 426 casts, and caught 20 fish. That's the score. Now for the facts. Dave caught all his fish on a 4.8 or 5.8 inch Jackal Nico Flick worm with a size 1 Eagle Claw Trocar TK130 hook and a 6 ounce Patagonia insert weight. All rigged up on a 7 foot 2 inch medium action spinning rod with 10 pound braid and a fluorocarbon leader. And that's the facts.